one and all, and welcome to today's little foray into our review of index laws. Yes, maths and maths and more maths, and that's what this channel is about. I'm the Maths Guru, and it is, as ever, fabulous having you watching. Now, if you haven't already, do me a favor and subscribe by clicking that little doohickey over there. Um, it's just so that I know there are people actually out there watching these videos and finding them useful. Uh, and if you can let your friends know, that would be great, great, great. Um, but otherwise, let's get on with the learning. Now, index laws are fabulous and they are used throughout the whole area of mathematics, probably from about year seven, eight, if you're there, all the way through to a degree, probably. Um, and they are one of these things, that if you can get it in your head now and understand where the tricks and chips and shortcuts are, then realistically speaking, you're done. Your maths is in the belt. You know, get that sorted in fractions and no one will be able to touch you. It's not quite true. And as you can see above me is the learning for today. You will understand that when we multiply numbers with indices, we're going to add them. When you uh, divide numbers with indices, we're going to subtract them. And the big one there uh, is that anything with a power of zero is one. Now I'm rushing that a little bit, but it is just awesome. Um, when you have a power of a power, you multiply the powers. Now we've done a lot of this work previously. Um, and uh, there seems to be a lot of text on this slide, but I'm just going to break it down for you. Now, basically, we already know that when you do x times x, we get x squared. We know that. You've been doing that for years. And when we had x times x times x, when you multiply something, you get x cubed. When you get x, let's just do one more. x times x times x times x times x times x. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So it's x with a floaty six. Now, we cannot spend our whole life writing out lots of these letters. We have to come up with shortcuts. And we come up with the idea that when we have x squared times x to the power of 3, lots of people go, oh yeah, yeah, I know this is x to the power of 6. And I'm like, oh, no. The reason being is if we multiply this out and, and write it in what we call expanded form, then x squared is the same as x times x. Here's my next x, uh, times sorry, and then we got x times x times x. And the question is, how many x's do you now have all stuck together with kitty kisses? And you're going to say, oh, five. And I'm going, yay, five. So here is x to the power of five. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you notice about the powers? Well, when I had the power of two and the power of three, they added together to give me that five. Ooh, this is freaking awesome. Uh, what about x to the power of four times x to the power of three? Same thing. If I have x times x times x times x, there's my x to the power of four times, there's my middle times, uh, x, let's make that a proper x, times x times x, and you'll notice the difference between my x and my times. Very, very important to be able to do that. So how many x's do I have all together kissing together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that becomes x to the power of seven. Again, what do you notice? We had x to the power of four times x to the power of three, became x to the power of seven. These two numbers here merely added together. And that's the power of this stuff. And because math is nothing more than a big fat trick, yes, then we end up with an example like this one, where they're just trying to trick you. Three x to the power of five times two x to the power of four. Well, we always put numbers at the beginning of expressions, always. Are they all multiplied together? Yes, that is three times x to the power of five times two times x to the power of four. And where there are times is, we can move them all around. So we get three times two times x to the power of five times x to the power of four. I've just moved the numbers to the front. I can do that with multiplication. Why? Well, one times two times three is the same as three times two times one, which is the same as one times three times, anyway, yeah, I go on. So making this like this now, I know that three times two can be written as six. And I know that I've got indices here now that because the x's are the same and we're timesing them then that becomes x to the power of add the powers gives me x to the power of nine so simplifying this six x to the power of nine this stuff is awesome now that's when we multiply by indices what about when we divide terms same thing if when we had x to the power of six times x to the power of four we added the powers together, and that gave me x to the power of 10. What do you think will happen when we have x to the power of six divided by x to the power of four? Well, the shortcut is, and the one that we all remember is, ah, because this x here and the x here are the same, they are effectively like terms, 
then we can subtract the powers. That becomes x to the power of 2. But why? Why? Why do we subtract them? Well, using this example here, it's x to the power of 4 divided by x to the power of 3. Now, we know that division can be rewritten. So here is x times x times x times x. There's my x to the power of 4. And I'm going to divide it by x to the power of 3. So I'm going to draw a long line under it. x times x times x. Changing my pen color. Now, what we know is when all of the tops of a fraction are multiplied and all the bottoms of a fraction are multiplied, then we can cancel things out on the understanding that there is a term in the top and a term in the bottom that are the same. Well, because all of my times, uh, tops are times and all the bottom of my uh, fractions are times and they've all got x's in them, I can do some cancelling. So there is an x dividing with an x. Now, what, notice what I'm doing. I'm putting a 1 and a 1 because what we're actually saying is that x divided by x is the same as 1 divided by 1. And I've got an x can go into there and an x can divide in there. An x can divide in there and an x can divide in there. And do I have any more x's to cancel? Uh, no. So now, because multiplication on the top line is really, really simple, I get 1 times 1 times 1 times x, which gives me x, divided by 1 times 1 times 1, which is 1. And the great news is that when we divide by 1, we can just write that as a whole number. That works literally with all of these. If I go back to my example of x to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 4, let's write that out as x to the 6 divided by x to the 4, which is x times x times x times x oh, times x times x divided by x times x times x times x. Lots and lots of x's. Now, are all the tops multiplied together? And these are the questions you need to ask yourself. Are all the tops multiplied together? Yes. Are all the bottoms multiplied together? Yes. If the things in the top and the bottom are the same? Yes. Then cancel. So there's an x goes into there once, and an x goes into there once. X goes into there once, 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 and I can't do any more. So what do I have? I have 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Yeah, yeah, not needed. And I've got an x times x, which gives me x squared. Divided by 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, uh, which is 1. And we know that anything divided by 1 is just the whole number. And lo and behold, is that what I ended up with in my question? I should cocoa. Now, that's why to do it. But most of us just remember this by using a shortcut. One of the biggest, fattest tricks in maths is raising something to the power of 0. This is flipping awesome. Now, anything to the power of 0 is 1. And I'm about to show you why. And if this doesn't blow your mind, literally nothing will. You're an art student, probably. Colouring in. Joke. Joke. Uh, let's just try and work out. Now, we've already said that when I do x to the power of 4, uh, 6, sorry, divided by x to the power of 4, when we divide, if this here is exactly the same, then we take away the power. So that became x to the power of 2. We, we knew that. We subtract the powers. So I suppose the question is, what is x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of 1? Well, that's the same as x divided by x. And when there's tops and the bottoms are the same, we can cancel these down. And so anything divided by itself just happens to be 1. Same thing here if I had z to the power of 1 divided by z to the power of 1. What do I get? I get z divided by z, which is 1. Uh, OK, what about numbers? 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 1. Now, lots of people go, oh, no, no, this only works for letters. It works with numbers as well. 2 divided by 2. 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 1, which is uh, a 1. Now let's do this with actual letters and powers. So we had x to the power of 1 divided by x to the power of 1. What do we do to the powers? You take them away. So what is 1 take away 1? It's 0. But we already know that that was equal to 1. And the same thing was true when I did z to the power of 1 divided by z to the power of 1. If we did that using my algebra rules, I get z to the power of 0. But we knew that the actual answer to that was 1. And if I did 2 to the power of 1 divided by 2 to the power of 1, that gave me 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. And ladies and gentlemen, I am now going to tell you that anything to the power of 0 is always 1. Because what it's really saying is divide by itself. So 5 to the power of 0 is... 1. x to the power of 0 is 1. 
3x to the power of zero is now. Because it's all in brackets, that zero belongs to everything. And again, anything to the power of zero is one. What about this one here? Do you notice the subtle difference between this example here and this example here? Well, one of them has the zero around a whole set of brackets. This one doesn't. Because this zero is only attached to the x, that's the same as three times one. Anything to the power of zero is one, but that turns that x into a one, which becomes three. And lastly, a complicated example not of three x to the power of zero plus, right, well, We've just done that there, the x, uh, the zero is only attached to the x, so that's the same as three times one, plus, who is this zero belonging to? All of the brackets, so everything inside that bracket now becomes one thing, and anything to the power of zero is one, so that becomes three plus one, which is four. Oh, review of index laws, realistically speaking, is just more about this zero power, but wow, is it a question in exams pretty much all of the time. And so we are going to do a quick recap of index laws. Yes, we are. We have looked at the idea that when we multiply terms with indices, we add those indices together. And we gave some examples of using exam expanded form and uh, why it is that the rules work. We did more examples before we moved on to said, well, hold on, what happens with dividing terms with indices? Oh, yes. Well, when we divide terms with indices, we subtract the powers and we were like, oh, why? And I explained why, because explaining is really important, don't you think? And then we moved on to this fabulous, fabulous zero power where we describe why anything to the power of zero is one. So many people don't know that. And then I did example after example after example after example before I took a breath. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have stuck with me to the end of this video, thank you very much. Uh, it's always very good to see you. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please, please, please do me that honor of subscribing by clicking that circular button there. If not, that's all right, don't worry about it. Just tell your friends I'm out there. Don't subscribe yourself, get them to do it. We should do some sort of loyalty scheme. Otherwise, there is a video loading for you over there. I've had fun, hopefully you have too. I look forward to seeing you next time. Maths Guru out.